Yo, what up? It's your boy John here from JohnDJones.com. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to become an EMVP and sort of some tips and tricks which might help you get there. Now, for those of you who are new to EpiServer and are thinking, what the hell is that? Um, an EMVP award is something that EpiServer gives out to people who help the community, um, who you know, give back, and basically who spread EpiServer love throughout the world. Rejoice! So, there are like a number of ways of becoming an EMVP. Um, you can write on the forums, you can blog, you can write your own packages or come up with you know, sample projects and you can create developer meetings or you know meetups. Now an EMVP award only lasts for one year. So if you continually to if you every year, year on year help sort of help the Epi Server community, you'll keep your MVP status. If for whatever reason you go, you know, I, I can't work on Epi Server anymore, you will lose it. So my story of getting into an EMVP is sort of probably a bit different than everyone else's. So about five or six years ago I was a normal employee and I was working for a company that I didn't really enjoy that much. For me, working for other people never really sort of inspired me, I was never really that motivated. It wasn't, you know, the companies in question, it was just, I think I'm quite stubborn and I just like to pick the projects I work on. So I had an opportunity to work with a CMS called Alterian. Um, most of you probably haven't heard of it, it was useless. Never recommend you sort of trying it out. But I had this um, project on Alterian and there wasn't really that much information about it. So around the same time, because I was starting my own business, I thought I needed my own website. So I, I, I made this terrible one-page website which looked terrible. I mean, my CSS skills at the time were close to none. Um, I don't know how that would have helped me get a job or win a contract, but you know, I made it. That sort of got upgraded to WordPress and then because I was working with this Alterian CMS and there wasn't any information about it, I just started writing a few tutorials about you know how to do some basic things like caching, getting pages, just all those standard things. Now, after that contract finished, I got a contract with um, doing EpiServer work and again, there's just a few things that I needed to do and there wasn't any information about. So I sort of wrote a few tutorials and I kept doing that and doing that built on quite a bit of momentum and then I started writing a lot more um, the amount of people that visit my website probably went from maybe 50 in a year to say 5,000 in a week and I think now I've got something like 200, 300 episode tutorials for people to read so that's how I um, so then about say two years ago out of the blue I got an email from one of the guys from EpiServer saying would you like to come an MVP which was you know quite cool. For me it wasn't something that I was actually trying to actively go out and get, I was just writing some sort of tutorials and helping people out just because I enjoyed it. And I think that's probably one of the first tips that I can sort of give to most of you like watching this is from the FP survey MVPs that I've met, I think a lot of people just do this because we like helping people out, you know, we like sharing like information with the community and we just sort of like, you know, finding things out. And I think if you're just trying to go into sort of becoming an EMVP just for the sake of you know getting an award or just because you want to, you're quickly going to get bored of it. I mean, one of the things of being um, an EMVP is you potentially every week you have to sort of do something towards helping the Epi Server community. Um, from what I understand, you know, working on the forums is probably one of the easiest ways to get recognised. So on a daily basis, if you're going through and looking at people's questions, then researching how to solve them and coming up with like good information that you know helps them solve their problem, that's something which will get you an EMVP eventually. Again, I like writing and I like blogging, so for me it was just writing. One tip if you are going down the blogging route, it would be much quicker and you'll get an EMVP a lot quicker than I did if you share your blog on the Epic Server world. That is one of the good benefits about EpiServer compared to some of the other sort of CMS platforms that I won't mention out there. That for them, they don't care if you're writing, you know, on their platform or on your own website. As long as you're writing about EpiServer and you're sharing it with the community, then you're you can become an MVP. 
Um, other ways, obviously, doing developer meetups. Everyone loves a developer meetup. If you can get some free beer and, you know, on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, get some speakers to talk about EpiServer, sooner or later, you know, you might get the sort of email of, sweet, join an EMVP. So you might be thinking, all oh, right, why should I put in all this time and effort if all I get is, you know, just some sort of badge? Well, aside from the badge, which obviously will help you get work, um, if you're a contract like me, it's sort of, I think there's only three EMVPs in the UK. So being able to put that on your CV when you're applying for jobs, basically, you know, it makes you get jobs a lot easier. Um, another thing is you get an EpiServer license. Obviously, EpiServer licenses aren't cheap. So you can get your own license to do what you want with. I think the caveat of that is it can't be a commercial website, so you can't set up an e-commerce store, but you could create your own blog, that sort of stuff. Probably the biggest benefit that I find from being an MVP is you get access to like the internal like Yammer network, and on there you sort of get sort of status updates, you'll get sort of updates on the latest releases, you'll be able to beat test features. I think recently they were asking for help to review the new um, certification exam. So you just sort of, you can ask questions directly to people in the team. So it's sort of really handy to bypass the support process and get information quickly. So I'm hoping, you know, some of this might actually help someone out there. I mean, I'm, I was always born with sort of like spelling difficulties and if I can sort of write a blog which gets, which gets read by 5,000 people, you know, every week, anyone else can do it because frankly, I'm a bit of a dicker. So aside from, you know, you constantly have to put in work and you have to constantly put in effort weekly. I mean, I don't think it makes a difference of what you do. I mean, personally, I think if I was starting again, I'd probably answer more forum questions. Um, potentially, I'd start like a video blog like this because I don't think there's that many people doing it. And then if you put your time in, sooner or later, hopefully you'll get there. Anyway, I'm hoping this has benefits someone. If you like these sort of videos, I'm doing a load more in the near future, so please subscribe. If you've got any questions yourself about you know, how to become an MVP, or you want some sort of tips or tricks or somewhere to start, leave some comments below. Otherwise, if you need some EpiServer help, there's my website, 300 sort of EpiServer tutorials. I think there's like a thousand just .NET tutorials in general. So head on over to www.johndjones.com. So until next time, peace.